Revolution, yeah! Buckle up! Little Bubble Lotion! It's a low revolution, yeah! Buckle up! Tune in to the Little Revolution. What's up, everyone? This is Poncho Moller. How are you? Welcome to the Little Revolution podcast. This is my boy, Weeman. You. We are here to entertain. We got a great guest today. I met him a long time ago skating when I used to skate for Think. I actually stayed at his apartment in San Francisco when he lived with Dan Jehobel. <laughs> he still skates. He's fucking amazing. He's also a musician. Let's give it up for Matt Pales. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Thanks for having What's me, up, guys. Matt? Nice Hell to yeah. see you. Nice to meet you. Nice Jason. to officially meet yeah. you, man. I've seen you for years. I've yeah, seen I you, seen you in... It's been forever. How but... long has it been, dude? Yeah. To, since we've seen each other, yeah. it has to be at least 10 or 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Instagram, we talk a lot. Yeah, yeah, stuff. absolutely. I'm, I'm proud I... of all the stuff you're doing. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm proud of all the stuff you're doing, too. Yeah, man. yeah. It's good always, stuff. I, I work with kids in Sacramento. I always tell them... Uh, Yes, she, she, you Can ever you seen American them, like, Horror Story? Can you a little closer? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That good? Yeah. And I tell him, like, you ever seen American Horror Story? And they say, yeah, yeah, you know the one guy in the, this part? And I say, I know, I know him. I know, that's why. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, because I, I, I follow this. I follow it, yeah. Yeah, man. Awesome, man. Well, it's really good to have you on your show. I, I, I do follow your skateboard. And you're, you're keeping up, man. Like, it, it, it was, like, it was slow for a little bit. And then I saw you kind of, like, get back into it and slowly yeah. just start progressing again to getting like yeah. you know like where you want to be yeah skate that's the thing with skating though you got it's 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 hard yeah so. and you hit i hit a low i hit a little low after being pro for so many years and then got into like working for the city of sacramento doing a uh, skateboarding like uh it was basically like a skate program and during that time <clears throat> i kind of fell off from actually skating street and going mm -hmm. out and searching for spots and doing all that so I was still skating, but I had like a knee injury and it kind of... When did you start you know, or stop skating professionally? Man, I think it was 2015 or 14. Okay. I started, like I was still on Creation Skateboards and that was through Satori. And I still had boards coming out, but it was like really kind of like... That was where people really started getting super good and their parts were insane. And, yeah. and for me, I was out, you know, I'd be out like, okay, let me just go out and film a big handrail trick or something like that. But I wasn't like... It's different than now, like, because I wasn't in that love of skating thing where I was just like, man, I'm just trying to still do it, but should I stop? So I kind of just slowly let it fall off and then got into the running a skate program yeah. with the city of Sacramento. And I was at a skate park and running the park. And, and that was cool because I still was able to skate when, and do when my living. When you had there. to find a different way to make a living after skateboarding, was that a, a hard transition? Yeah, it was kind of like, <laughs> um, I'm laughing because for a little bit, it was a little bit of... Uh, extra weed money and stuff like that <laughs> but then it slowly turned into like let's um let me see what i can do with skateboarding and i was like uh doing skate programs and the lady was like we need a coordinator working for the city so i got an actual city job and then that's where i started i'm still uh, with the city of my buddy I danny fuenzalita i, I I don't think he skates professionally no more but he's i mean he's still like just yeah I ahead of the game he's great he's older and he lives in Miami and he yeah. like teaches people how to skate. Like moms, dads drop yeah. their kids off and he like has like a whole skate school that he where he teaches these kids how to skate. Yeah. One of the kids that he like was teaching for a long time was when he was younger, the Zion. Yeah, Zion. Yeah, Oaks. and now yeah. he's like on Baker. So but good, this was right? one of the kids that he brought up huh? brought up, you know, <laughs> came up with and like was there teaching them. It, it's kinda dope. I'm like, damn. I know. A living out of it. I love Fonz, dude. He's so yeah. sick, and he still rips. Oh, absolutely. Still got that like switch flick, and that he's just. So is that so kind of really what good. you're doing there? So like, what? No. So what it was was I started doing that. I did it for about seven years, and I loved it. I was like, I'm still able to skate and do that for a living. But uh, and then there was a, I worked for the city, so there was this like we're union, and they have a thing where they like give uh, jobs to the people like who have been in hierarchy. So they started giving the skate park jobs to people who knew, had no idea about skateboarding. And I was pissed. You know? So I ended <laughs> How up being, did they do, like, I know it yeah. didn't make any sense, but it was a union thing. So like they just, some other person started running the skate park and they put me in a, uh, in a youth jobs program. So that's what I still do to this day though. And I actually love doing what I do. So the, what I do now is I do, a, um, it's a youth jobs program. And I basically like help with, 
getting all their paperwork started and they, maybe we hire 50 kids a, a year, I mean, a season. And then they work in the city parks and landscape and do all that. And I'm just like the um, coordinator for all the different crew leaders and and adults who work with them. And it's not just landscaping. It's more like life lesson type stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's more like teaching them, you know, the valuable life lessons of hard work ethic and respect in each other, things like that. So we work and then we have moments where we sit down, we, we talk about life lessons, stuff like that. I always bring up skateboarding yeah. and stuff. They're like. Do, 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 do they listen to your, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Do 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 they do they listen to your music? Some of them, yeah. yeah. Some of them, but I try it, because it's like you know the the weed thing. I'll be like, <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of you know. What I mean, like I, I more legal. talk about skateboarding. It's legal. I mean, it's yeah, legal it's legal. Yeah. It's legal. It's just like since they're young, I don't. Yeah, really, no, absolutely. You don't. I don't really it. bring it up as much, you know. But I bring up skateboarding all the time. I'm like, oh, you ever heard of Huff Brand? Yeah, I used to skate with that guy. Or you ever hear of uh, Diamond? You know, that guy was, you know. Nick so, like, Toshe. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's funny about Nick is like, we used to clash on tour, but like, I'm so stoked on what he's done. Like, yeah. remember That's... he used to just talk about the, the bolts? Yeah. And he'd talk about the brand and then to see what he That's did with what, it. That, what's crazy is nowadays Diamond has gone so mainstream that people that wear it, they don't realize that that just started off as a hardware company. Yeah. That's yeah. what it was. Like Dude, yeah. people are wearing Thrasher hoodies that don't even All know day, yeah. what it is. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's it's like a trend. It, it's gotten so mainstream, but that's that's what brings in the money. Yeah. You know? I had a big dude at a bar one day be all Thrasher, do you even skate, dude? And he's like drunk and in my face. And what? I'm looking, and I'm like, looking at him. He's even, a big guy, but yeah. I was like, I was like, first of all, like I think I could still lay you out, but I yeah. was like, I was like, yeah, no, no, nah, dude, I don't skate at all. Like, <laughs> get out of my face, dude. Like, <laughs> you, you were on Think Skateboards back when, like, I yeah. think Think Skateboards would, like had some of the best yeah. riders in the world on there, man. And you were, yeah, that was the perfect part time. of that, man. Yeah, I'd say like that was like the time it was me, Wade, Dan, Fucking Phil. Wade. And we were Phil Shaw, and man. and I was surprised. Like honestly, when I went pro, I felt like I wasn't ready, and I think some people did too. So I know for Think Damage that part, I kind of went on like a little like I gotta go, I gotta Dude, like you just went go for it, you know what I mean, and, and do crazy shit that I've never done. And uh, it was a cool time though, because we were all skating together all the time, and like and like skating with Phil and Dan and even Wade, they just looked at skating like. Oh, you see this huge vert wall? If you just thrust yourself up, they'd be like, "No, just thrust yourself up there and get into a Smith." Or <laughs> Phil would be like, <laughs> "Phil would be like, it's easy. You just ollie and you'll get up there." And, and so in my mind, I'd be like convinced, like <laughs> that you could do it. I could do that too. And so hella pushed me to get better. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And Dan was doing all these like grabs to grind over pyramids because you know, think like yeah, we'd go on these tours, um, and it was just like. You know, you've been on tours. And then Greg and Greg Carroll was the team and, manager. Yeah. Yeah. Greg yeah. was team manager. And Greg was a good, really good mentor and the really like pushed you. And he would be a little hard on you, but that was okay because we were like young. Uh, you yeah. Know, I can't can I swear on this. Yeah. Thing? Like yeah. young dipshits. You know what yeah. I mean? We're like, no, we're doing dumb shit all the time. And he'd be like, come on, man, get your shit together, bro. You know, and uh, he was cool. Like, I still look back to this day and I tell him when I see him, like, I really appreciate his like, you know, his positive mentorship during that time. And I think a lot of people do, man. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he had a good uh, effect on on most of the people that ever rode for him. Yeah, I remember or were his friends. I remember Tamper Pro once. He was like, "You're fucking Matt Pales, bro. You can do that." He's like, "Just get out there and kill it, bro." And I think I had like the best run I ever had. I remember he's because he just tell you like, "You can do this." Like, what are you talking about? And you're like, "Yeah." I can you know do what's this, funny bro. is I felt the same way like when I t right before I turned pro. Yeah. Because Zach Martin was on the team, Joe Sierra, like mm -hmm. a few other dudes that had amateurs that had been on the team for a long time, and they were, yeah. and they they offered me a board, and I I didn't feel like good about it because I was like, dude, like you have Zach and Joe Sierra, like these guys yeah. have like ridden for the team way longer than I have, time, and they yeah. rip. They're like, yeah, but no one's asking for their board. Yeah. People are asking for your board. Yeah, you had that. With, people with, knew and, you, yeah. and that's when like. Phil and everyone, not Phil, uh, Dan and everyone were like, do it, dude, do it. Yeah, yeah. and you know, Joe, feeling, Joe still lives in Sac. Huh? I skate with Joe a lot. Oh, really? He still lives in Sac. That dude rips. Still skates, and his son's rip. Yeah. His son, G Gento, Gento, I always mispronounce his name, but he skates with us all the time. That's right. But they, yeah, and uh, 
But like, dude, you killed it though. Thanks. Man. Like I was like on the way here, I was like, I, I was like, I gotta talk about the first time. Can I talk about the first time I met you? Yeah. So like I'd seen the sponsor me tape with you and Tim McKinney. Yeah. <laughs> Tim O'Connor. Tim O'Connor. Sorry, O'Connor. Yeah, we'll yeah. get into McKinney because I'm still friends yeah. with him. Yeah. This is the no slide dangler. Yeah. So yeah. I'm one of those. He makes fun of my no slides. <laughs> And they weren't all the way up. <laughs> yeah, you got them, though. You, yeah. you stuck them. And I remember seeing that video of you and Tim skating those three stairs. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, this guy. And, and Dan's like, hey, he's going to come on and stay with us. And I'm like, okay, let's see if he's pretty good in person. You know? yeah, yeah. And then we get we get at the top of Leavenworth, the top of that hill. Yeah. And he, we, we meet him, what's up? We you know we meet each other. And you're like from Jersey. And you're like, what's up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> so we start cruising down the hill. And we're just zipping through Market Street going down to like, we're probably making it to EMB because yeah. that was our usual run. Or China Banks. Yeah. We'd go and skate through from Leavenworth down all those hills. And dude, this guy, you skate so fast and do tricks. And I still, in your video parts, you're cooking, dude. Oh, thanks, like man. I skate medium speed and try to get my shit, but you were like jamming along, nollie fronts of 180 heels, fronts of 180 flips, switch heels. And I was just all blown away. Like, oh, dude, thanks, this man. guy rips like, you know, and I think we went to some crazy rave. I don't know if you remember this. Yes, I, I was, <laughs> went to a rave. Yeah, Greg, Greg took us to it. Yeah, and we went to a rave and, and I mean, I don't know if, I can talk about this on this podcast, but we did. I, I, I think that was the first time I did like a psychedelic. Okay, was with you. <laughs> I don't know if you did it, but I don't want to. Yeah. So I did, and I remember just being like, "Wow, this is such a trip!" And we were hanging out skating. I remember watching Mike Carroll. Yeah, do it was his hip, and yeah. he was doing three sixty kickflips over the hip every time. And I was like, "Damn, this guy's as good in person as he is like in the video," because I'd yeah. never really skated with him and just catching it right. And then he started like tapping his tail. Yeah, on the that little ledge that was up there, and then. I, all of a sudden, he's like 360 flip tail side, boom. And I was just all, what the hell? Yeah, you're just high on acid, just like, what <laughs> the fuck yeah. is going on? Yeah, and I'm all tripping, like, dude. And I think uh, him and his girl gave us a ride back to Dan's apartment yeah. that night. <laughs> <laughs> damn, those were the times, dude. Yeah, I remember that time because I was like, damn, this is like my first memory of hanging with Paunch. Wow. Yeah. It's a good memory, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, there was a big, like, they at this rave, it was huge. It was outside, and they had like this big giant slide, one of those big slides. Yeah. And me and like someone else, I think it was like Dylan Gardner or someone. Oh yeah, Dylan Gardner. We yeah. like we like skated down it. It was rad. Like and they, everyone got all pissed. Like, the you plastic, can't skate those plastic ones. Yeah, those that big people huge ones. Would, like yeah. going down in like yeah. sacks. And, like, in. Yeah, and like yeah. burlap sacks. Like it was great. It was fun, man. Were you? On, were you? Uh, did you have a part in Think Damage? No, I couldn't remember. If I you got were... kicked off. Yeah, what? I didn't. I didn't know about. I that. got I was, kicked I off, and out. and then I got put back on, and I think I got put back on when you weren't After on the team I anymore. After I went to like, I think I went to Supernaut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a part in Think Damage, and I fucking hate myself for. I don't hate myself, but it was like it was I didn't, stupid. I can't kid remember shit. what happened. It was stupid kid shit. Yeah, like young <laughs> kid shit that I did and got myself kicked out. But then yeah. Greg Carroll like reached back out and. Yeah, that's what like I, I, a couple I was, years later, and I was able to. You know, yeah, that's when you got back on. And yeah, I got like, back on. But your part, I watched your whole part in uh, what's it called? Not dedication. The one the, we talked about. Last. Yeah, and that was yeah. so good, dude. Thanks. Nolly man. big spin flip over the head. Oh and, yeah. yeah, and uh, that nose slide to one eighty nose grind and oh just, thanks man, just sick. Dude. That that spot was great. Did you ever skate Bernal Heights in San Francisco? No. It was like a pyramid. Like it was like built at the school. It was a pyramid. But it didn't have a bottom, so you had to ollie up and do tricks. I saw side. that spot a lot, but I yeah. never went there. No. And yeah. we would always like uh, take wood there, or, like sometimes, yeah, I've like seen that. Yeah. yeah, it was fun, man. Yeah, it was like Fort Miley without a bottom. Yeah, <laughs> it was a pretty fun spot. Yeah. Um, favorite spots you've ever skated, like San Francisco, or? Well, I used to. We used to love. I used to love going to Miley just yeah. for the fun of it. It's not really my favorite spot. It wasn't, but it was my favorite place to go with a bunch of friends and just and China Banks. You know, yeah. those two spots were like during that time were like the funnest places to skate to. Like I remember, we'd have such good missions with um, because we lived next. Okay, can I get into this little thing about where we lived in Octavia yeah. Street? So we lived on Octavia Street, and uh, Huff lived next door with Ben Liversedge, yeah. Chris Keefe. Mike Hernandez would stay there sometimes, all the New York heads. And then we lived next door with like Low Card Rob. And all those guys lived in the the two apartment complexes. Yeah. So we'd hit days where we'd be like, where are we going? Say, we going to China Banks, we going out to Miley. And like 
a lot of the nighttime, we do these night missions where the whole crew, all the New York guys, Drahobel, Matt O'Brien. I love O'Brien. the night missions. Yeah, and we'd all Especially bomb hills. Especially when you hills. have a big group because then, like, no one can fuck with you. Yeah, we'd all bomb hills down. And you know that street where Miles Silva's just did that switch tray in his uh, I know. Skater of the Year? Yeah. It was like the street in San Francisco. And if you're just cooking and you just snap a quick ollie, you're going to make it. But you got to just commit. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's So we'd a really all try to street, ollie yeah. it at the same time, like all of us cruising. But uh, we had good missions with Huff, Ben Liversedge, all those guys. And we'd yeah. end up at China Banks and skate for a little bit and then, like, make our way back by the end of the those are like my favorite missions for SF. I, I guess I wouldn't say favorite spots, but. Yeah. Are, are you originally from Boston? Yeah, originally started out skating in Boston. Yeah. But then how did you get on Think? So I, w- I lived in Boston. I used to send sponsor me tapes. Me too. <laughs> you know, oh <laughs> the, the VHS <laughs> tapes. tapes. I sent them to GNS. I sent them to everybody. And so I got on GNS and we end up, uh, end up doing the NSA. Con- uh, Who was the big guy on GNS? At the time, it was like Matt Beach, and just before that was Willie Santos, but okay. I got on right after okay. he was off. And then I went to this contest with like, we made it, it was like New Jersey, uh, Bricktown or something like mm-hmm. that. Bricktown, New Jersey. I think I did good there, and then we went on to like South Carolina, and then we went to Houston, and that's where everybody from Clyde to Clyde Singleton, Matt Reason, Ben Liversedge, and the whole New York crew, uh, Matt Beach, uh, Matt Rodriguez, like every pro from that 90s era was at that contest like it was it was like and from there i met jake phelps actually jake mm. phelps like sent me indies he's like like i think i front three the pyramid all sketchy he's like i'm gonna send you some indies and i was like jake phelps, hell yeah, because i was on going he's yeah. like Fucking going <laughs> you know and so, so you're an indie guy yeah now and then i wrote for indie for a little while i went back to venture but i'm still on indie. so were you on indie when joey terche ran it yep yeah, yeah, yeah i love joey man yeah so cool dude he always you ever hang out with joey it's been a long time. We went to Jamaica together, though, and did that really? whole trip. Yeah, that whole Jamaica trip. Wow. Yeah, that must so, have been fun. It was a hell of a fun. We, uh, we had, like, so many different people, too. That was another crew. With, was like, it a skate trip? It was a skate trip. Chris Ortiz came with a whole crew of people. Uh, John Cardiel, uh, Matt Rodriguez. It was the first time damn, we brought John skating Cardiel, to Jamaica. Man. But big up to Joey because he really was the one who organized most of the boards that we gave out to the kids. I mean, there was at least 100 boards from different companies and oh, sponsors. Geez. And the kids were just like, yeah, man, give me that board, man. Let me try it out. <laughs> and just like killing it. And on first try, get, almost getting ollies. We're like, dude, these guys. And now they got a park in Jamaica. I think Popcon, the big reggae artist, he like shows footage of him trying to skate there with boots on. <laughs> Have you seen the parks in Africa that are starting to yeah, pop up? So and sick. the kids just ripping and making yeah. up their own tricks and stuff like i think ethiopia's got one yeah <laughs> so and tough. they're gnarly dude they're like right in the middle of the city like at some just corner of a place with a dress on or something yeah. some of the girls he, got a dress and they're all and the kid there's one kid that can rip all in downstairs well like, like barely, cement parks everywhere yeah damn that's dope yeah, they're kind of cement like kind of like their style cement uh, i don't know if yeah. i think niger what, helped put some something? of that together maybe that's it. Did Nigel help no, put some of that together? Or was hot he... Birdman did it. Oh, sick! And it's man. crazy looking. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, it's when... so cool the skateboarding. You know, can be world. Yeah, yeah, just worldwide. You know. When did you um? Have you always listened to reggae music? When 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 did that happen? That was probably like right. Okay, so when I was on Think at the end, like nearing the end of us being on yeah. Think or, or me being on Think and being connected with Think. Uh, I was hanging with Field and Matt and Matt all those. Fields. Matt there Field, you go. Mike Dare, uh, Matt Mike Rodriguez, Dare. and Holy we were shit, not really Rodriguez at that time, but we were li- we were all listening to reggae, and they were introducing me to reggae. And then, I know that's Joey's shit, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and Joey, we I didn't know he was into it, but it, yeah. apparently he was. We were kind of on separate sides because he was still the whole Hell Ride crew and those yeah. guys, but I didn't know him that that well. But uh, we end up like. I end up like I love Peter Tosh and Bob, but I didn't know that there was a whole dub music thing, and I started getting into that. Started getting into all the early reggae, like the Gladiators, and just all these early roots reggae bands. And uh, and then I just really just that that was like the genre of music I listened to for like every day, all day. You know, it went from like classic rock to like wait a minute, I love all this reggae. Like, and then over the years got into like sound system culture, got into um like in a, being in a sound system that like is basically like when you're in the sound system you do your 
you know, you got your your music that you play with. Uh, we have like four different DJs in the crew, and Cardiel's actually in our crew, which is kind of cool. That's really bad. We don't hang a lot, but he's in there. And so we get dubs from like the famous artists and they'd be saying our name or saying like Capital City Rockers or, you know, and they, they big us up. And so you want to, the thing is you want to get as many dubs as you can. So if you clash another crew, you're like, I got this song. And they're like, you know, if this world were mine, I'd play a rubber dub all the time. You know, tunes that like everybody knows in reggae, but then you, you take a sound system, you, you'd be like clashing them. So you'd be like, uh, Capital City are the best. So they sing to the same melody and try to, beat the other sound system mm. it's a it's a big thing so yeah. it, it's, it's 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 a dj battle sound yeah, system yeah battle sound time. systems is like a dj battle so i really got into that type of thing like djs and sound systems and watching a lot of the jamaican artists like uh just toast over rhythms and have the dj mixing as they're toasting so the song's playing and they're mixing the dipping it out and it just it's kind of like hip-hop when they yeah. just like dj over the beat right but but early 80s what is what is called what does that mean toasting over rhythm toasting over the rhythm would be like when like in early 80s when they had people like super cat or nicodemus or all these classic reggae dudes they would just instead of having a band they just have the dj play a, a an instrumental of like a classic song like like the sister nancy bomb bomb is a classic rhythm called stalag which when you put that rhythm on everyone wants to toast over that rhythm or or like a, a classic song like Ring the Alarm or something. So toasting is just, just Got like it. Ring rapping. The alarm, it's just like rapping the alarm, over the beat. Yeah, so another guy might come on and, and rap something different we'll over that one. beat. Murderer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the hot milk rhythm. Yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. So every rhythm is different, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love Ray. He's got pipes. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrible, but yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> I mean, that might have been uh, might be Barrington Levy, but uh, yeah. But yeah. So what brought me out? I, I don't know. We kind of trailed off, but what brought me out with, to get on Think was uh, I moved in with Dan, and I was on GNS, and then I uh, was Jehovah. Living, and yeah. Jehovah was riding for for yeah. Think. He was riding for Think, and we were skating together every day. And I said, uh, for how long were you guys skating together? Like a year. It, no, it wasn't too long. It was literally only like four months into living in SF. I had GNS boards coming, and I, we'd skate EMB that's, every day. That's one thing that I noticed with, with with living in San Francisco and living here in Los Angeles. Sure, when I lived in L, uh, in San Francisco, like all I was doing was skateboarding. That was my life. But you weren't driving anywhere. Like no. every like transportation system is so good there that yeah. you were just skating everywhere, jumping on bar, jumping on a bus, like. Walking like that's hills. what everyone did here it's like you have to drive to you every to, yeah. spot it's kind of right. nuts yeah it's yeah. only a seven mile radius and you got the bar and then if you're gonna get up the hill you just wait for that bus to take you yeah. up there unless you want to walk that's what i loved about san francisco yeah san francisco is small though you know what i mean yeah. but it yeah. did have a lot of spots here if you drove to one spot you'd find a couple other spots no for sure came, that were around yeah. like the same spot but especially still, back in yeah. the 90s but i feel like here still you have to drive to them that's yeah no totally here, la seems like it's got a lot more spots in a, in a weird oh. sense it, but it does and it does, it does have, have them a lot of and spots. It, if you notice on certain if you find certain ones you'll be like oh i didn't know that spot was right here and that spot's right like here. it's right next to it yeah, yeah like they're in the same skate video yeah. yeah the hotel i'm staying that has that rail that carol does the uh nollie flip over in one of his parts or okay it's, a, it's like a stair set and then the rail is slanted yep. It's and like I'm like, angled. Yeah, I want to ollie it. Just to oh, I like, know what you're what talking about. A lot of people did tricks over that. Yeah. Right? It's, like, it's, it's a kink rail, right? I mean, if I could ollie it's it still, a, it's like a, at a subway it's a station. It's kink rail, and it's yeah. a subway station. Yeah. 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 If I could just ollie it, I'll be happy before I leave. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's got so many, like, people I like, like, um, that, that skated L.A. like that was, like, when I watch Nada Sparts or when I see Van England and... Uh, you know what kid I love is Leo Lopez. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dude, just the stuff he skates and the way he finds spots and looks at spots and does stuff. I'm just like, I wish he, I want him for Sodi sometime, dude. He's like my favorite guy to watch. Yeah. Just creativity, just charges. That half cab flip he does over, he did a half cab flip down a set of like 10 with like a gate. Oh, <laughs> okay. Like, dude, just the Ollie that's sick. Like, yeah. Is that Leo, Leo Lopez, sick. right? Or Louis, 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 Louis Lopez. Louis, Louis am I yeah. saying it wrong? Yeah, it's Louis Lopez. Jeez, no, no, the half cap flip was sick, <laughs> dude. I was like, what the heck? I was like, this guy's half cap flipping over that. It's not an easy. It's a weird trick to come at a uh, gate, you know. What, what yeah. I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask, like, 
in being a white guy that that creates reggae music, yeah, yeah. Rasta, have you had to like kind of What's kind weird, of overcome you know, and fight some shit? Yeah, because I little, feel like more that from, would be a thing. Yeah, it's more from people that don't know anything about reggae and that yeah. don't know anything about Jamaican culture or Rasta yeah. culture. Um, it's more from people like that, like people that ignorant. Know, people. They have no and what, idea. And what do they say? What is the typical thing They'll that just they come be like, at you with? Yeah, like are you trying like the appropriation thing or this and that? But with me, I've I got so many Jamaican reggae friends and so many Rasta friends that I, I mean, for the past twenty to thirty years, I've been so enmeshed in that culture with with folks like that and people like that and friends of mine that like they never are like they're like no music this music is for everybody and we don't have any hatred towards it towards well, that's somebody what's trying rad, to because do it you, you know? have actual people that are rastafarians and people that are yeah like brought up in that culture whatever yeah and, and it's that, all about, that are like backing you and like um yeah. supporting you and then yeah. you have all these other ignorant folks that are like trying to like it's a lot of people bash you for knowing, like yeah. doing something that you love. Yeah. And it's not like I don't know anything about Rasta. Like it's like yeah. I could see if like somebody doesn't know anything about it. But for a long time, I always was like very uh, influenced by that spiritually, like so how did mentally. You know, and all with, that was stuff, that you know? stuff like did you um, did you kind of just embrace it? Did it ever bring you down? Like or mm -hmm. was it ever like, fuck, like, damn, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do this because of this or. Oh, at the beginning, I remember just thinking like, man, I love this stuff. But being a uh, being who I was, I was like, how c you can't really like do music like that if you're a white guy. <laughs> you know, I thought that in my like mind. Like you thought like no one would take but you But then I started seeing like all these, I started yeah. going to festivals and started going to reggae shows and seeing all these reggae bands with all different cultures, ethnicities, white, black, Filipino, Mexican, everybody. And you go to a festival, and it's like a, such a mix, a cultural mix of people. Like my friend from Ghana the other day, he's like a, he looks like the Bobo Rap Dread guy. And we go to the gym together, and he was like, I want to throw a festival with Indian music, with with uh, Puerto Rican salsa music, re reggae, like, Oof. and just have it be like a festival of all different cultures. Like, because he's just like, that's what it's really about. Instead of like, you can't do this because you're this, or you can't do this because you're this. It's like, it's like sick to have the, um, it's just amazing diversity just, yeah the diversity like I mean. you always look at like groups too like and it's like there's different like races like playing the instruments like yeah. you got a white guy doing this someone else doing the keyboard a black guy doing that you know it's yeah. and, and they're all kind of just bonding together to, yeah. to create music it's but i'm gonna be honest i'm not a huge fan of the whole cali reggae movement like it's huge right it's big and there's tons of bands i don't want to name the bands because but i'm just not i just don't people will be like don't you love this band or that band i'm like I'm just a huge fan of Jamaican reggae, like original, or if you like, if it's a little more raw and a little more dance hall style, that's more what I'm. What is the the Cali reggae movement? What is that? Is it's that... like uh, it's huge. It's like you'll have a festival with about like six headliners, and none of them are Jamaican, right? <laughs> And I'm like, Jim, oh, this is wow, who created okay. the music. Like, we gotta, you gotta pay respects to the originals and the the originators, you know. But I get it. It's like that's what's selling tickets and that's what makes money but i really am big on like bigging up jamaican reggae because that's where it came from it came from rock steady and ska and then dance hall was like early hip-hop came from came see, from dance hall you really. see a lot of hip hoppers go back and yeah. get their beats and different things from the guys in jamaica yeah where they go to the clubs there and figure out how they're doing it <laughs> and do it it's it's almost like they started the beats there and then they kind of like sample it from them yeah and it's insane yeah uh i think the guy's name was cool herc was the originator of like hip-hop in yep. new york and he was a jamaican dj so he saw how they just bring the sound system out yeah toast oh, that's what i was saying they toast over the rhythms and they'd, they'd be early reggae they, where they do like you roy and guys like that scuba dooba 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 day and and then they turned that into talking over the rhythm and then it came it turned into like stiff all the early hip hop like it was like street style like it was full street style where yeah. they did set up like in the streets yeah. and just cause the club right yeah. there and people are like this is how it is this yeah. is this is real yeah. that was my early mu I, I don't know yeah. if you listen to it, but my early hip hop was like Stetsa Sonic or the earliest stuff like the first Run DMC like yeah. before it became no, popular like the early early I was stuff. always into music from every kind of genre yeah when I was younger like there was no choice of like where it was being played or who did it or whatever it was did just, you have the cassettes 
everything. <laughs> yeah, have fully cassettes. You know what I mean? And you're just, and records. Yeah. And you're just listening to it and, it, and it's just good, you yeah. know? Good music is good music, no matter yeah. where it's from. Yeah. I think I had the, uh, the Ghetto Boys earliest one. Too Short, I remember I had Too Short. Yeah. Uh, I had a, it, well, I lived, I'd go to Boston, but so I knew like some of the city stuff, but I was from like small town. You know, the East Coast yeah. has got rural little towns. And I remember I had this Too Short uh, cassette, and Life is Too Short. And I remember being like, well, this is different because it was like Oakland, California hip hop. And it wasn't it was like. It way more mellow. It wasn't like BDP what yeah, I was yeah. listening to before. And I was like, well, it was because BDP and all these East. I listened to a lot of East Coast hip hop because I was kind of from there. So, yeah, it was. Uh, but I'd go into Boston and like a lot of my friends, because I'm from a small town. None, nobody listened to hip hop there. But, uh, but like all my friends in Boston, Jamal Williams or Robbie and Jemmy, and they'd all be like super like kind of city kids. You yeah. Know? And uh, and we, you know, get down and when you uh, music and, when you lived in Boston and skated, like what were you skating in the winter? Was there a, a skate so, park, the playground? Yeah. yeah. So I lived about <laughs> a, forty minutes from Boston. This place called called Raleigh is a tiny little town. But if you drove to Danvers or What's it called? Ipswich, it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's close to Danvers, which is close to Salem. Oh, your buddy Rob Zombie's from Salem. Yeah. So we would uh, we'd get on the T. It's called the T. Take the T, and you'd get into the Boston Garden, the, the garden. The garden. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a big green. And now it's different, but it used to be this big green subway would go over the top, and so you'd go in there and you'd hear the subway going over. And uh, we take the T in, and then we just skate. Uh, Boston for the weekend or something like that. In the winter, like in when the winter. So in the winter, oh yeah, that, that was the question. In the winter, we'd go to this place called ZT Maximus, and it was an uh, indoor skate park, like the only one that I knew of. And so we'd take the T there, and uh, the Cambridge Pool is over here. It's like this giant pool. I never really got to skate it, but it's like a, it's like basically a huge wall ride. And the pool skaters there would skate it like it was a pool. Uh-huh. Like they put on their huge pro design <laughs> pads. Kevin Day and some other guy, Frank the Recca, I think his name was. <laughs> they would just like lay back, grind that thing. They'd kill it. I think Eli Reed had a picture maybe okay. on cover of Thrasher front blunting it before it got destroyed. Or wow. He killed it. That, But like I never got to skate it, but it was right across from there was this place called Maximus. And it was just a, a half pipe with a coping that was like that big. <laughs> and like super Damn. slick masonite and wow yeah. we learned we got our bones there though we skated there all the time i used to skate with this dude lennon laura and he lives out here now he skates like venice i see him skating the curbs out here he lives here but uh he was a cool kid and he put me on this little company called big top so i'd come in and meet lennon i'd come in with a crew of guys from lynn massachusetts and my other buddies from amesbury massachusetts uh tom and dan and but we'd all go in and one time we got there and it was like closed, right? It's freezing cold. And we're out there shivering, and the projects are right behind there. And these guys came up, and they were just like, they punked half the kids out of their boards. And I remember just sitting on my board, like they're not getting my board, like, yeah. uh, like I didn't get, I didn't have money like that. Like I couldn't just get yeah. a new board. And I was like, and they looked at me, and I was like, uh, and they just jacked those fools, and they were just pissed. <laughs> I remember I, just being like, well, dude, they're broke. They probably see boards. And they, <laughs> They were like, shut up, dude. Those guys are assholes. Like, I was like, well, you know, we're in their we're in their town. They probably just saw us and were like. Was that a big difference when you were able to like move from the East Coast to the West Coast, like skating? You're like, dude, they have like great weather year round. Holy oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was what I like experienced as far as being from Jersey and then being Freezing able to come cold, to right? the Cali with Think Skateboards. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, this. It's like snowing where I live now, and right here, like you guys are able to skate every day. Yeah, like sixties for yeah, me. I remember I like, getting here in amazing. February of my senior year because I finished high school early. I got to San Jose to meet my, my buddy, and I'm like, oh my god, this is such good weather. It's probably like sixty degrees. It probably wasn't even that nice. <laughs> but for me, I was like, oh my god, it's not zero. Yeah, it's not snow on the ground, and so I remember we'd skate. There's all no night. salt on the floor. Yeah, we used to skate those DMV curbs all night long. Yeah. Right by, uh, I lived right next to Jamie Tom. Oh really? And, and me and Greg, my buddy Greg, moved there together. So I remember Greg. Yeah, we. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many fucking stories, but we lived with Greg. I lived with Greg. We'd skate those curbs, you know the DMV curbs, and yeah, set in SF. Yeah, and I remember just being like, "This is so much nicer weather," and uh, and the dude that that house we lived in, I think the City Stars guys stayed there. Fabian, I met Fabian, I met Joey Surreal, I met Clyde. All those guys, Clyde ended up staying on our couch. It was like nice weather. I was like, "This is the best." I was like, 
freshly out of Boston, living there for like, I think I lived there three months. Jamie yeah. lived right down the street and would, uh, he was like a, a, a footage monster. You know? uh, Jamie Thomas? Yeah, he was all skating for experience. You know, I saw those Drake Jones early video. You Drake know. Jones is so, so good. Yeah. But that weather change was big for me. I was like, we can skate all year round. This is so good. Absolutely, yeah. man. <laughs> um, but like Boston was good. I it was, it was raw. But I remember days that um, so like P Stone Preston, he lived in Boston. He was going to college in Boston, and I always bring up Ben Liversidge because that was my homie back in the day. We skated together a lot. So he was going to Boston college or something so i would take the train in and then i'd, I'd hook up with them but we'd go in into dunkin donuts have coffee get all warm <laughs> and i'd be like okay let's go out and skate for like an hour and we'd go out and skate and preston had a ponytail and he could ollie hella high but he was a huge dude you yeah. know what i mean and uh he just was so cool dude he'd rip and then we'd skate all around did Boston. you stay friends with them for yeah then we the stayed year? friends he actually filmed preston like I love Preston, man. He filmed my whole um, profiles for four one one. Wow! And he was just such a good motivator. You know, he'd be like, "Yeah, that was crazy when he passed." Yeah, man. suck, man. It was like I didn't realize how many like people's like I don't. It's gonna say sound corny, but how many people's lives he touched? Like so many people came out yeah. of the wood where they were like, "We love this guy." Such like, a good guy. My dude. condolences. Like it was pretty yeah. rad. It was almost like the same effect as like when Jake. Jake mm -hmm. Phelps died, you know, yeah. I'm like, holy shit, this guy, like, like put his stamp on the skateboard community, so much, dude. Man, yeah. And he, I remember when he wanted to start for Thrasher too, he would, he was like, yeah, I've been filming. I've been, I've been getting clips with the Thrasher guys. And then it just slowly turned into, he was filming everybody. And he just, yeah. his natural love of just like going out and filming with people and his natural vibe of like, Hey man, you got that? Like, like just pushing people to do stuff and, and be like, ah, if you do this, you get this trick. We get stacked together apart and just, just being so positive and just. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's always like, let's cook something up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he was either grilling or like they always said. But before that, he'd be like, ah, make some spaghetti, get some, get some, uh, some uh, garlic bread. And, blah, blah, and there was always, you there know, was this time like when you're saying like pushing you to skate. Like when I skated for Think and um, I was, I was trying to get this picture i saw danny gonzalez grind like a candlestick at uh there was like a, a dumpster and then there was like a rail off the dumpster into like the walkway mm -hmm. but on the other side of the rail it's like like maybe like like you know 15 feet drop <laughs> and so you ollie off the dumpster to grind on the rail and then transfer it into the but danny gonzalez but he did it backside because he was a uh, regular footed yeah. so i'm like oh i could get away with doing it front side but then I went up there and, I, and Greg Carroll like put the wood up there. He made it all like, you know, smooth for me to be able to do it. <laughs> and I went up there. I'm like, I'm not doing this. Fuck <laughs> this. <laughs> so like, so he went and like Greg Carroll did this. He went and got like a mattress and put it at the bottom, like, like some homeless mattress that was like around. Mm -hmm. And he put it at the bottom. So if I fell, <clears throat> I would fall into a mattress. So it sick. would still suck, but it's better than falling on like, you know, like. Yeah cement yeah and so make it work I, right i did it one time and like I, I i i was i was wussing out i was ollie like and then like tapping my 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 trucks on the rail and jumping off yeah. to the other side but at least you had that there yeah right? and then finally like i grinded and i slipped out this way and like <sighs> fell on my chest on the rail but that's held on to it yeah, that's and like the fear. my board fell on the other side where the <laughs> mattress was and I was like, fuck this. I ain't doing it again. <laughs> Greg Carroll grabbed my board. He threw it back on the dumpster. He's like, do it again, dude. You got this. And then I ended up doing it. That's the one. But it was I like he was clip. pushing yeah. me, man. It was yeah. it was like, it was fear, though, man. I was like, I ain't doing this. He, and he did whatever he could to help to, yeah. to, to like, give me, like, the motivation and, like, yeah, you, got, you know, like, confidence to do it. Right? Pre P-Stone was like that. And uh, Greg was like that. And I that's the thing is like sometimes out of spot who cares like whatever you got to do bondo it yeah whatever you got to do to get the clip i don't nowadays i got no shame in the game i gotta throw a piece of wood on the side just to fall onto dude, a few times who cares? i remember luke uh, luke uh, ogden, ogden yep. a photographer that spot we were talking about Bernal heights 
he built this thing to put at the bottom of it and be perfect. Oh, like just that, to stay there. Yeah, so, to stay yeah. there with metal. Like it was so smooth that and he it was built solid it. underneath. Solid, and we were able to get so many tricks like on this thing because of him, oh, like building man, Luke it. Luke Ogden yeah. was the guy that did that. Yeah, he was so cool, man. I liked shooting with Luke, and and it was crazy is I didn't know what a influential photographer Luke Ogden was to like Gabe and people I and Lance Dawes because oh, they yeah. were always like. Luke, man, he's the guy. And like when you look at his shots, he just is so artistic and, well, and he's he shot, real mellow. I mean, you know? Yeah, he shot for like Thrasher. There's certain like photographers that like shoot for magazines that have been there like forever. Yeah. They're like legends to whoever, whatever yeah. photographer is going to work on there. Like, do you guys, ha either you guys have like a dude that you ever shot, you always got a good photo with that person? <laughs> I always got good photos with this guy, Ryan G. Oh yeah, G. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I love Ryan, Ryan G. G yeah. Shot a, uh, my kickflip over the Brooklyn Bank's wall, Sick. and it looked, and, and it was like a whole New York article, and the kickflip like was right over the wall, and I it looked like I was doing so a karate bad. kick. Oh, that's it so was sick. just one of the best photos I ever had. I mean, I thought G so. was the your guy. I, G for me, it was like uh, Bryce Knights or or Morford because Bryce. Yeah. For some reason, I, I always got a Bryce picture with him. Bryce was a great photographer. And I don't know why I always got a picture with him, but uh, other it, but like uh, Morford, it was either I would either make or I would either make or fucking break. I would either <laughs> yeah. slams. I got some of the worst. Well, that's what he brought Morford out of you. It's like either you're making it or breaking it, yeah, but you're I'll, trying. I'm gonna imitate him. He'd be like, "Hey, Pills, I know you got this. I, you got it. Just fucking do it right here. This is the one." And I'd be like, uh -oh. <laughs> "He'd be like very soft spoken." In other words, he's saying like. I don't want to waste a lot of film on this, <laughs> you know. That we was the, the sucky part was yeah, when it was film yeah, reels, right? All right, we did another. Here goes another roll. Yeah, they pull out the yeah. roll. Oh, be like, no, it's okay. Just you just have to roll. You're the just roll. trying. Yeah, like, you're just like fuck. I just did a roll. <laughs> yeah, and so I remember Morford brought me to some of my best clips, and, and but I got some of the worst slams with him. Like I back lipped that. What's that one rail, Lincoln? You back lip that? Yeah, and I, I landed it real. What like, was it? Sixteen stairs? Yeah, it was big. So I landed it hands down and slid out, right? So I'm like, Morford, we gotta go back. And that's another one we put wood there and everything. We had it all set up. I was like, we gotta just get it because I wanna get the footage. And I go back and I go to do the back lip and my my back truck clips, the biggest fear right on the back lip. It clips on the way up. And I just fall backwards like this, feet up, fall on my back down the stairs, boom, 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 right? <laughs> I'm just wrecked at them. And hella people are watching. Like, there's a bunch yeah, of people yeah. there. And I just get up and I'm like, oh, my back. And I think my face was bleeding. It just got wrecked. But luckily, I had the big old dread bun. <laughs> <laughs> Stopped you from getting a concussion. And I hit my head and it was like, there you go, dude. And they're all, is your head okay? I'm like, that was, that's fine. It's my back. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> my back had like a black and blue this big. I had to go to Woodward the next day. I had like, your dreads like, are like wearing a helmet. <laughs> yeah. <it> was, <laughs> They they that's saved me a couple dude. times. They what about me. you? Who was your? I shot with so you? many people. But you had to have a dude that like was your dude. Was Delgar your dude? Delgar was one and Cossack. Both Cossack, those dudes. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Shot Cossack. with those dudes all the time. I think I only met Cossack one time, but yeah, yeah. He's but Delgar he's and Cossack. Inspirational. He's like, do it again, Jason. No, he it. wanted it done now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. The pressure was on. Yeah. He's like, come on. Come man. on, dude. What are we doing? Let's go. <laughs> Sick, yeah, yeah, but but Morford and and uh, Bryce were definitely my dudes. Like, they were my favorite. I'd always get a clip with them, and then other ones I get nervous, you know. How how long have you been? So how long have you been doing music? Would you consider yourself a professional musician now? Pretty cool. I mean, yeah, to a degree. Um, I would prefer to like like my goal is to start doing more, like have a live band. And hopefully my son, my son is like so hesitant, but he's a G when it comes to music. Like that would be so rad if and, that, and we that do, would work. Yeah, we've done a few little sets, and and like he's like he's to a point where he could be a professional musician with anybody on What's, guitar. What is he, he does? Play. Guitar. He's guitar. Oh, okay. But it's like, I mean, he's just a so good. You know, he's he's got his own little Latin salsa band now though. They play salsa. They play cumbia. So he's so, kind of immersed in that. But I want to get him to start a band with me so we have a backing band. It doesn't always have to be the same members, but as long as I, you know, it's me performing and with then- him. So yeah, with, with, a with a band, band or a reggae band, like yeah. with yours, for instance, what would be the ideal, 
like band, like of musicians. You would have a keyboardist, a yeah, drummer. Yeah, keyboard, keyboard, keyboards and, and guitar is essential. And then okay. bass and drums, that's really all you need. And then you're the singer, you're just... Yeah, leading. and with reggae, the big thing is like, especially with live performance, um, is, is mash it up. You want to mix it, boom, 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 boom. Like you're singing regular, right? But then you always hit them with the mix, and the mix is like a... Doom, 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 doom. And then you're, you're flowing over that... For, Maybe eight bars or six measures, which is, you know, eight to ten measures or, or eight to sixteen or whatever. But um, the key is like dynamics. You know, like if you got a band, if you don't have a lot of players, like big horn section or something, you want to get the crowd singing with you, call and response. You want to be like, so I, I've got a DJ in this. Uh, I'm with the Capital City Rocker sound system, but my my friend Chris does a uh, Squarefield Massive. It's like a different sound system, but. He gets all these big gigs with big crowds, so he a lot of times I get to like open for Kali Buds or open for the Movement or some of these other. Big Are you guys bands. doing festivals or colleges? What sometimes you a festival, sometimes it's like opening for like at a uh, at a big venue, Ace of Spades and Sack, or we or like Sierra Nevada Music Festival is one I want to get on. So so I'm plugging for that. Like I could th definitely see you just with that song. Yeah, yeah. like playing a huge festival. Uh, yeah, and, and I can run it. Like if there's a big crowd, I can. I can hold Especially the crowd like and I'm, band you. yeah, my, my favorite thing is big crowds. A lot of people get scared of big crowds, but I'm like, oh no, this is, we're going to, I'm going to get them singing. We're going to, we're going to interact. But when it's a smaller crowd it's the hardest. Cause you're like, this is, why am I doing this? <laughs> you know what I mean? You still try well, to get them. That's the thing I think about with stand up too. You know what I mean? Just bite the bullet. Yeah. Like, Cause yeah, yeah, like, exactly. I, I the tour and some of my audience would be 120 people, you know, 300 people. Nice. And then, yeah. and then you do another night where it's just fifteen people yeah. that aren't even watching you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why am I doing this? They're getting up and they're. <laughs> why the hell am I here? Yeah. Like, you know, they they don't care. Like, you know, know. like, but, but you, you gotta, gotta just go sit there it. and suck it up. Yeah, dude. you gotta go through it. I had yeah. a show like that recently, a similar thing, a small crowd. And, you know, I'm just like, but it was on Mother's Day, and there was a bunch of like yeah. six old ladies. <laughs> so I kept being all, let's hear for the mothers, uh, you know, <laughs> happy Mother's Day, y'all sing along with me. And they'd be like, okay. Six you know. old ladies. Yeah. You're like, where's the soup? The Goldie crab. I mean, there was Bring some, some other, soup. there was like about 15, 20 people total, but it was a good show. It was cool. And they were real supportive. Good. But I, I can feel that in, in comedy must be like the same thing. Yeah. Oh. What about you when you did the stuff on the road with, with Steve-O? Those things were always sold out, I bet. Sold right? out every time. So <laughs> did you ever feel though, where like whatever you were talking about wasn't, Getting no. the response. They that love you. <laughs> yeah, wanted to we, get, get, we got the crowd. They they, love you, I know yeah. what they want to hear. Okay. Yeah. And what did they want to hear? All our stories. It's just things. the wild stories. Yeah. The, the wilder, they, the better. They came for the good stuff. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I was thinking about it. You do a lot of stuff with Rob Zombie? Oh, yeah. I've done two movies with him. You know, he, he hates skateboarders. He does hate them? Yeah, there was, there was a skate park that was going to be built by his house. He went to the city to ban it. What? He didn't want it built by his house. Oh, because he didn't I, want that because it was his house. Or? Yeah, just get in. Yeah, he's like, no, nah, I don't want that by me. Nope. Is this in Massachusetts? Is that where he lives, or no? Wherever his big house is, or whatever. I don't know. Maybe Ohio, yeah. Salem. I know that. <laughs> but yeah, he went to the city, voted LA. it out, dude. What? Yeah. You better, Rob. Make, a, you better make a phone call, dude. Y'all, if he calls me for a movie, he doesn't give do a it. shit what I say. Like, <laughs> he'll, he'll just be like, I'll just put you into my next movie. You'll yeah. die again. Shut up, yeah. little man. What was the one What was the one that you did with him? Uh, is it Three from Hell? or? I did 31 where I was a Nazi Hitler clown. Yeah. That's both <laughs> Spanish. I just remember when I saw you, I was like, that's Punch. I stopped. I was like, hey, I had to call my girl. I was like, that's Punch. I had that was friend. crazy. I didn't dude. know you were in it. And yeah, wow, I know. I remember we were shooting at a theater in downtown LA. Mm -hmm. And uh, craft service and location was like a block away from the theater. So we had, to, you basically had to walk from the theater like maybe a, a, a block to get to location where they have you all set up and craft service and everything Yeah. to take a break. And I remember I was walking from the theater. They're like, all right, cut. You, we're going to, we're not going to need you to go back, you know, to your spot. And so I just started walking down, like I think Broadway street or main street. And I'm walking down the street, like as a Nazi Hitler clown, oh, no. no one's with me. It's just me. And oh, I don't, no. I don't think anything of it. I'm just so like caught up in what just happened that I don't, I'm not even thinking of it. And 
people are staring at me. People on the bus, it's like slow motion. Everyone on the bus is just <laughs> staring at me, like riding by. I have a big giant swastika on my chest, a wow. little Hitler stash, you <laughs> oh know. And, I, and and then like, and, and then I, I and then I walk past the window and I see my reflection, and I'm like, <laughs> oh fuck, yeah. <laughs> and I just start like kind of like walking quicker, like to the space, kind oh of like my blocking God. myself off. But for literally like half a block, I didn't even. I forgot that I was like dressed like this. It was <laughs> crazy, dude. Uh -huh. That must be cool, though. That must be cool to be able to work with such a like. He's a pretty legendary. Yeah, it was. It was producer. pretty I didn't legendary. Know he skateboard. Yeah, but maybe the, just. Yeah, I didn't like know that until he told me either. That yeah, sucks. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know because skateboarding is so rock and roll, and I don't understand. That's what, he what did. I didn't get either. You would think like, oh, they're punk rock too. Rock You're like, he's like, move them closer. Yeah. Make the skate park right, right next there. door. Perfect. <laughs> Nope, he went. <laughs> Fucking Rob. <laughs> um, do you want to start producing your own music? Like doing it yourself, making it yeah. like, maybe yes. even bring in other people and produce their music too? Yeah, so think... that's that's kind of where I'm at right now, actually, is I, I've, more so than the live performance, I love producing. Like I'm, I'm yeah. in the midst of producing all the time. I have like, it, it's like a three-part thing with my production, like, I have the song and the rhythm and the idea or the uh, the, the song structure, mm -hmm. and I'll hit up my producer or my son. And I'll yeah. be like, "Play me these chords. Let's let's record this." So I'll record the uh, the chords. I'll, yeah. I'll have him do the bass. I'll have him do the pick line, and then I send it to the producer, and we either like sample it and mix that stem. It's called. Yep. I send it to him, and then he's like, "Okay, let me put some hits on this. Let me put some." And that the producer's in Orlando. His name's Rick Hayes, and he works with like big, a lot of big artists and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, but he's really good. He's like my favorite producer. So so we just work on Facetime because he's all the way out in Orlando. Yeah, of course. So I'll be like, do this, do that. Uh, hit, you know, drop it out here, drop it out there, add this to it. So so recently too, I put out a song called uh, Skateboard Sound Killer. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool actually. And it's it, the original the original rhythm is called. Um, a throw me corn it's like a throw me corn is like the name of the original song it was on but it's been reproduced a lot of times and it goes do 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 and so like any reggae person who hears that bass line it's like oh that's the throw me corn rhythm yeah. so i reproduced that rhythm and just just fixed it up made it different right yeah put a hip-hop beat on it kind of and then i had a this artist named skillinja he's like this crazy um uh, reggae dude from like the midwest that's like really good at lyrics he's like the eminem style reggae dude he's like super lyrical and then this other dude gary dread who's in the movement it's like a, another pretty popular band he's the drummer but so we all did a song together so i put out that M my song our, that song big long spliff is called <laughs> and skillinger put out one because he heard mine and he was like i made one called skateboard killer and so it's like a three part so it's like a rhythm <laughs> yeah. so three songs on the same rhythm so i produced it so like what you do in music is you, you give them a percentage. Like I send it out to the distribution. I send them a percentage request yeah. and they get their royalties request. And then, and then they say, sign off on it. And then we get, yeah. you know, I did a song with uh ranking Joe. He's like a legendary reggae dude from Jamaica. And you just send him the, uh, the royalties like this 50, 50 split or whatever we're doing for the split. Yeah. And, and that's how it runs. I'm looking into like doing more artists. So, and, and like, cause I produce a lot of rhythms so I have a lot of rhythm. So it just takes a lot of time to get the person to record, to mix it, to master it, and then to get all the permissions right. And yeah, but, uh, no. but it, it, it's a lot. But you shouldn't in life. You shouldn't like shy away from hard work to make something great. Don't get comfortable. Yeah, unless yeah. you're uncomfortable. Do you ever? Yeah, right. Do you ever yeah. tour, Matt? Uh, not for music no. much. I, I mean, I haven't done anything like that. Since. I could definitely see you touring, man. Like, yeah, the, I, I think the, the, the crossroad I'm at is I'm so full time at my job and I love my job and it's like retirement, all that stuff. I've yeah. been there 15, 17 years. So I love that. But I also love the music. And, and so if I were to have a band and a working thing and I was getting gigs where it was like paid and then I'd probably move on from the city. But in the, in the meantime, I'm just, I do local stuff. And then if I come out of town and, or I, I get a gig out of town, I'll fly out or do something like that. Next year, you should do Tampa. Oh, yeah. You're saying like you want to go to Pro, Tampa dude. Pro? Yeah, Tony Trujillo's band just played at Tampa Pro. Yeah. Oh, you man. Should, on a Reagan night, maybe get Cardiel to go out and have him yes, DJ. Dude. Dude. I just did the, 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 the whole stand-up comic thing with Taylor Clark out oh, there. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, man. Like yeah. it would be rad to have like... 
Yeah. Well, we're making, we're talking about be... it. We're just planting the seed right now. No, yeah. no, we're manifesting that, dude. <laughs> yeah, make that Don't. happen. Got a whole year now to come up yeah. with something and bring it out there. Okay, okay. No, there it would be go. cool, especially with you, Cardiel, and your son. Yeah. Dude, and then you got a drummer. You got a drummer. Sick, yeah. What, what's Cardiel? Is, what, is... It's Cardiel DJs, actually. Okay, so you would DJ. We've never done too many uh, things where he's the DJ and I'm the singer, but we, we're part of the same crew. It's like a, it's like Capital City Rock. Is well, that, that would be really cool to bring yeah. you guys together because, I mean, you guys are both so yeah so respected in the skateboard community yeah. and that's kind of what what they support and like you know that's yeah. the only reason i went out there is because they're like pachamola does stand-up comedy now he's he's pretty good let's bring him out <laughs> uh, yeah i think you know? my friend noon saw you yeah so. no, he's was, the one that made this whole little <laughs> yeah 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 no he saw me he's like you're good man yeah. he's like you know Matt Pales? I'm like, yes! You know? <laughs> yeah, he's from Sacramento. It's because I hit him with dad jokes all the time. And, oh. and then he's like, he's like, I saw Poncho <laughs> doing comedy. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. Damn, there we man. go. Yeah, yeah. And now you have something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. Look you, at you we're, went we're, to, oh, we're yeah, sporting you got, the ganja. Ganja in my brain shirt. So that's, yeah, that's the Ganja in my brain shirt. The original is, is cool, but I got the remix just came out. On it's Spotify? Out there. It's on Spotify. It's on yeah. iTunes. It's on YouTube. It's on everything, you know, Instagram. Yeah, I, had to, I had to really plug it to get on Instagram because I, I had it all out and all of a sudden it wasn't on Instagram because people remix that song. I saw that. Yeah, because I put it out as an acapella when I first put it out. 15 years ago because i was like this way djs will remix it'll get popular and it worked because it's got millions and millions of remixes views one remix on youtube has like 20 10 million views or plays so people love it and i get money off it every month you know it gets it that, pays that's me. what i was gonna ask you guys make little dough yeah it's not it? a lot but it's like 500 bucks a month just off that tune alone nice <laughs> yeah i mean it's like it's that's cool. extra money it's extra money dude so is there another tune that you're trying to make then like to to be able to kind oh, of oh man it? if any of them hit i'm pumped you yeah. know what i mean <laughs> if anyone hit like that so i'm always putting out new tunes at least couple, every couple months you know but like this one i put it out as a remix and so they couldn't it they put it out like the second it, we tried to get it on instagram like i'm like okay my new single's out and i'm promoting it and I'm like, why isn't it on Instagram? So I had to email the company I go through, which is TuneCore and, and this distro kid and all these other distributions. But basically, to make a long story short, I just had to send them all my numbers to prove that I'm the owner of yeah. it because somebody's got it up and, and they have a remix of it up and they're making yeah. money off it. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. happens? They just took my voice and put it on a remix, and now yeah. they're making money on it. Yeah. So, oh yeah, if I if I knew how to, if I knew how to get in touch with that person, you don't have a manager. No, that's what. That's, yeah, that's what they're for. I know, man. Or a lawyer, or a lawyer. I, yeah, a lawyer is the one. An entertainment yeah, lawyer. Entertainment lawyer. Uh, the one thing though, um, I was working with this record label for a little while, but they're, they just. I looked at what they, they were doing. They look out for themselves. Yeah, and I looked you at what they were doing. I'm like, at, I could. I, I'm doing this just as yeah. well as them, and the, their little Instagram has like barely any. Fall. I'm like, I could promote better than them, yeah. and I'm not making. I mean, no disrespect to them because they do have a little bit of a pull when it comes to there's a big difference between collecting royalties and collecting publishing rights. And if you're not a, it, to, to collect uh, songwriters publishing rights, it's, you have to ha you have to be like a company, like an LLC or something. Yeah. Okay. So just, they, LL, just incorporate yeah, yourself. You just start dude. one, huh? I got to start yeah. one. I gotta yeah, you got that, that, that good it. job. Yeah. <laughs> You know, incorporate yourself, yeah. be a production company, then you don't have to worry about that shit. Yeah, and be able to do it ourselves, yeah. Yep. I could ask some people. I know a few people have done it, so it's the next step. But uh, That's so rad you that your son does things music. You got two new things to do now. I know, yeah, dude, you yeah, you guys are that, motivating and me. And then you got to get on the road. You guys are motivating me, man. <laughs> dude, <laughs> if you get to Tampa Pro next, next year... I'm going to yeah. try to make it to Tampa Pro. And then we could be out yeah, of Tampa be, Pro together. That'd be cool. We're doing <laughs> what we love. Heck yeah. <laughs> does Tim, does, did Tim go out? Tim O'Connor? Yeah, Tim went out, but he didn't go to my show. That what prick. The heck? He doesn't love you anymore, fucking dude. Guy. No, he's a fucking guy. <laughs> he right? is a fucking guy. No, he had two sons, dude. Oh, yeah. And he brought them with him on the road with him, and they nice. just weren't able to get into the bar. Because one's like eight, the other one's 10, oh, and yeah, we're yeah. at like a. The, the 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 bar did you know that Tampa Pro owns a bar yeah like where everyone parties yep. and like nice. that's, that's Ybor a City I, yeah where all the strip really clubs rad. are I don't know anything about that but I'm just saying uh -huh. like, I sure. heard they were there yeah you know what's funny is I do this joke and I, I kind of cater it to whatever city I'm in yeah and they loved it and I I did some skateboard stuff 
And when I was like, so uh, I've been skating for, uh, what, what's the joke? I, I, I was like, uh, I started skating when I was 10, became a professional when I, when I was 18, and at 15 years old, I fingered a stripper. <laughs> And I say, right here in Ebor, you know, like, you know, and people are like, yeah, it wasn't Ebor, you know, like, and that's not even true. I was like, you do it in every I was city, like 20, you can do it <laughs> you're like city. 30, <laughs> you're you old fit. man on yeah, tour, yeah. <laughs> chick's like, give me a hundo. <laughs> yeah, you got like at 30, you're trying to finger a chick and she's like, what is this, high school? <laughs> Like, stick your dick in me, dude. Yeah. <laughs> is this what oh. you paid for? Well, if you got good technique. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, have you seen these fingers? <laughs> they they made a like, vibrate out of me. It's called pocket rocket. She's yeah, like, I you was need concerned to about swearing me, on here. I'm like, oh, dude. <laughs> Holy fuck. What are we doing here? <laughs> no, 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 yeah, like, we don't care about swearing. We shouldn't yeah. let you know. Nah, like, we kind great, of. Oh, yeah, good, free yeah. world, dude. See what Fuck yeah, you want. fucking yeah, it's yeah. just like what I say before so many things. Nah, like, nah, <laughs> say whatever you want. That's how we fucking roll. It's a so, good joke, though. Um, like you could cater it to I any city. How, how we looking? I think we got Is like two, like five minutes left. Oh, yeah, no, it's right. pretty much two. Yeah. Will Pales. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. that went by quick, man. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh let's get you back on when you got yeah, more stuff yeah. on the road. And Thanks talk for about... rocking my shirts. I'm glad Dish. I brought them. Thank Ganja you. in yeah. my brain. Me this <laughs> usually I'm not a stoner or nothing, but usually most stoners give me weed. <laughs> and I have to give it to all my weed buddies, but now I finally got a shirt. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't rock. even bring weed with me. I was gonna I saw my jar and I was like, oh, I don't wanna fall asleep while I'm driving. <laughs> no, I'll be anywhere. Dude, I've gotten weed driving down the road. People dude just was hook you taking up. a bong tub. I'm like, no way. And the guy's like, dude, we man. <laughs> and we're fucking driving and he's handing me weed. Nice. Dude. What? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Some of the kids I work with, they're all, you're going to be on a podcast with that guy. I'm like, yeah, man. So, yeah, yeah no. Well, thanks great. for having me. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming out, dude. Do you have any stuff? Like, tell people where they can follow you at and listen to uh, your yeah. music. Okay, so uh, Ross Matthew underscore look at, Pales. Yeah, look into this camera right oh, here. Oh, Ross right Matthew underscore Pales on Instagram. Find me on there. I got all my music on there. Spotify as Ross Matthew. Um, Instagram, uh, not uh, YouTube, anywhere. You can find yeah. me anywhere. My, I'm on all the digital platforms for music. And, uh, and We're going to yeah. tag you too when we post and all that. So nice. people will start Appreciate connecting it. to you. Yeah, yeah. man. Dude, Appreciate you guys yeah. having me on. No, no problem, man. I, it's good that, to catch up with yeah, you. Yeah, it was really good to catch up. I, I, you reminded me of those times, you know, especially yeah. like when that was the first time I when I went to this, uh um, San Francisco, when I started skating for Think, like the first time, I stayed at Greg Carroll's house when he lived with Mike, yeah. like at that house. But he also, he kind of was like, you can't stay here no more here. You're going to go stay with these guys. <laughs> That's and how stayed, you ended up with us. Yeah, right? and I ended up with Matt Pales and Dandra Hobo yeah. when we were uh, young. Dude, we were I, was, I think I was we, like 21 or 22. We missed a lot of stories yeah. in there. Yeah. We skipped a lot of stories with Dandra Hobo. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, leave those out of there. Leave those stories in the yeah, past. Dandra Hobo's Come a on. wild band. Hey, God, you were here two weeks longer than you should have been. We're going to move to his house now. Yeah. We had a blast, though. So it was fun. I learned a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for coming on our yeah, show. It's really good to see you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah.